morning, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the Thursday edition live stream uh, where I'm usually talking about the plant of the week. So if you see my face, that's usually what I'm talking about. Uh, my name is Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens. We do these live streams every Tuesday and Thursdays and the theme changes up a little bit uh, just depending on what we've got going on. Uh, we have new things coming up like tomato mania. So we're gonna be talking a little bit more about that kind of stuff. Uh, but the last couple of Thursdays I've been talking uh, with you guys about the plant of the week and the plant of the week is tuberous begonias. We have all of our bulbs and finally it took a little uh, long to get some of our stuff in. They were a little delayed, uh, but we've got our dahlias, we've got our begonias in, uh, we have lilies, we have all kinds of really amazing stuff. So I'm going to be talking about these gorgeous uh, begonias here. Uh, these are the tuberous begonias. So these are the ones that come up every year and they die down. These are ones that do come up pretty well here for us year after year. As you know, there's certain things uh, or maybe you don't know, but there are certain bulbs uh, that don't really repeat bloom and come back for us uh, year after year, uh, especially the things that need the chill time because we don't get that. Uh, but there are things like um, all of the t uh, tulips and the hyacinths and things like that. They don't repeat bloom and they don't come back. Uh, they're a one-time kind of spring thing, but these do. So what's very, very popular with these is planting them into large containers. Um, so you can bring them out and you can put them away when they're not flowering. That's a very common thing. Uh, that was something my grandmother did year after year after year. Uh, she lived in cooler Pennsylvania, so she would bring them down into her basement, um, which Good luck finding a basement here in yeah. Southern California. <laughs> You're not gonna find that. I put them on the side of my house. Uh, so in the kind of little breezeway that I don't really walk through. Uh, but these are the tuberous begonias. Um, this is the one that I have at home that's just so pretty. Look at that flower. It's really nice and big and beautiful. Um, so the really common thing for these is to plant them into pots. Uh, they're gonna really start coming and waking up in like March or April. It might be early this year because our weather has been so wacky. Uh, so we might get a little bit of stuff early, um, but the way you wanna treat these is um, making sure that you're really feeding them and watering them when you're supposed to, and then completely doing nothing to them when you're supposed to. So I'm gonna go over that a little bit, uh, but there are different kinds. This one actually is um, odorata. This actually has a smell to it. Normally you don't get a smell uh, to begonias, but these ones actually have fragrance to them, uh, which is quite lovely. We actually grew some of these here uh, last year and it was just so nice to kind of peek down and take a smell. And I think people who know begonias are looking at me like I'm crazy, like, don't, does that girl know those don't have any smell? But these ones actually do, which is kind of uh, pretty amazing. And then um, there is the pendula kind too. These look really beautiful in pots because they kind of hang over, which is really amazing. Um, so inside here, you can feel them. They're actually chrome, so they're not truly bulbs. Uh, they're flat, they almost kind of feel like little um, donuts, sort of. Um, so when you're picking, you wanna make sure that you feel some firmness. These are not super, super hard. Um, actually, there's more, there's four in them one. Um, they're not super hard, hard, like how a tulip would feel. You're going to feel a little bit of a sponginess. If your finger is almost going into it, it's not good. Um, so you want to feel kind of like a softer onion when you're feeling for them. So you're feeling in here for, um, your little crumbs in there. Like I said, almost like a little donut it has like a divot or maybe like this, you know, it's flat peaches a little bit like that. Um, so this is a mix of colors in here. Um, and then when you're planting them, uh, you want to put them in some really good fertile, but well draining soil. So uh, I think a lot of people think like, oh, to wake up my begonias, I need to water, water, water. But that's not what they actually need. It's the warmth that they need, which we are getting early <laughs> this year. So I'm guessing I'm going to see some stuff coming up probably the beginning of March. Um, a little bit of moisture and warmth is what they need to kind of wake up. So when you put them in the ground, you don't want to do any kind of fertilizing or anything quite yet to them. Uh, when you put them in your pots or you can plant them in the ground. Um, it's a little more tricky in the ground because they do have a tendency to rot out. Um, and if you have them in an area where you're watering consistently for other plants, uh, sometimes they'll come back, sometimes they won't. It just depends on if we have a really wet or dry year. Um, so that's why I like to do it in a pot because they have a lot more control over that. Um, you want to start giving them a little bit of water, um, not even right away. You want to probably do that um, at the end of this month, but just a little bit of moisture and you want to bring them out into a pretty nice kind of sunny space. Uh, the more inland, the little, the more difficult, unfortunately, these guys are. When I'm talking inland with this, I'm talking about like about 15 miles from the coast. 
Uh, they can have some problems with it being too hot. Uh, they don't like to be too hot. Um, so there you're definitely going to need to give them a lot more shade. So I would say uh, morning sun to about one o'clock and then some good protection the more inland you are. Even with me, I'm pretty coastal and I still mine sits in an area when I'm ready to bring it out uh, where it's getting sun till about two o'clock. So morning sun till about two. Um, and then once you start seeing a little bit of growth, that's when you want to start fertilizing, but you're not going to go gung ho on that quite yet. So you want to do something uh, that's on the lighter side. So I would use this guy. Um, and again, I lately have been talking about the ones you mix with water a lot, which normally is not my gig, but we've been talking a lot of things where you put things into containers. And I do like this so much better when I'm planting things in containers than this one, um, just because it's a little bit easier to control. And a lot of times I like to plant other things around it. So it's not just a bunch of dirt. So that's, these are a good thing to do that with. If you're putting the bulb into the ground, uh, you can put some um, violas or some, uh, something pretty around the top of it. So it kind of have two different things going and it's not just a big old pot full of dirt, right? Uh, so once you start seeing a little bit of growth on there, uh, you can start feeding it with this one. This is the um, Seagrow uh, from Grow More. This is the 16, 16, 16, but it half, half strength with this in the beginning. Uh, you don't want to go too crazy. Once you start seeing more growth, maybe about two or three inches, then you can switch over and start going into full strength. And that's when I would actually switch over to the blooming one because with something like this, I'm greedy and I want as many blooms as I can get. And you can see these numbers jump up pretty significantly, right? Um, I don't knock this one though, once it starts flowering, um, just as a little bit of extra oomph. It is the granular one that you can sprinkle along onto the top. What I really like about this is it has bone meal and that's really good to give the nutrients into that chrome. So it's storing that up, especially for the next year. Um, so they don't need a ton of water to wake them up. It's, it's all about a little bit of moisture and warmth. So you want to make sure that the soil is really well draining. So again, in pots, we're using potting mix, potting mix, potting mix, not planting mix, planting mix in the ground, potting mix in pots. Don't mix up those two. Um, I love the Malibu. Uh, the Malibu uh, is a little bit more on the pricey side. It's really amazing because it has a lot of fertilizers in it. So it kind of makes your job a little bit easier and you can tend to be a little bit more of a lazy gardener with that one. Uh, but the regular potting mix works well as long as you're fertilizing. Um, the one thing that's really, really common with begonias, a couple of the issues that you can come across with them is they're a little bit on the brittle side. So definitely stake early instead of waiting till they're too big because they can break pretty easily. Um, planting them too close together. So I know we tend to want to have a lot in one pot and make it really, really nice and full and they will get full on their own. If you plant them too close together, you can get some rot on them. Uh, they don't do well without good circulation. So if you cram too many together, uh, rotting problems tend to be a big issue. Uh, that's why I also tell everybody they want to be moist, like a run out sponge moist, not sopping, because if you get them sopping wet, they're going to rot. Uh, so you want to stay away from that. They're really, really, um, very herbaceous. So think like something like uh, a celery stalk or something. They're, they're very um, brittle in the way that you can snap them. Uh, and they're very, very filled with water and very herbaceous. So if you get them too wet, they can have issues with rotting. So if you're going to put them in pots, make sure that you have them pretty well spaced. So I would say um, a bulb maybe every foot because they do get fairly big, depending on your variety. But these are all pretty big varieties here. Um, and then you can sometimes get some powdery mildew issues, especially if you're more coastal, they grow easier when it's coastal, but if we have too much of a humidity issue or too much of a marine layer, uh, they can have some white powdery mildew. That's where you look the leaves and they almost have like a white fine powder on it. Um, this is what I love to use for that. This is the three in one spray. Uh, this should be in every gardener's back pocket at all times. I love this stuff. This has the sulfur in it, which works really well for um, all kinds of mildew issues. So powdery mildew, rust problems as well. This works really well. And this also has insecticidal soap, which is great. So if you have things in there like um, aphids or white fly, uh, this works really well. So this is kind of one of those things that works on a, a big array of different things, but I love the sulfur in this for um, the issues with any kind of 
um, powdery mildew. Um, and then sometimes slugs can be a problem. If we're up in pots uh, and you're keeping your area underneath your pots pretty well cleaned, you shouldn't have too many slug problems, but because they are so herbaceous, the slugs really can do damage pretty quickly. Uh, so you wanna make sure if you do notice something that you're treating that right away. Uh, and I know it's not really exciting or glamorous, but hand picking slugs and snails is really important. So if you see one, don't just leave it and put down something, pick that up. I know it's gross and icky. Uh, maybe use like a paper towel to pick it up, but make sure you get rid of those. Um, and then putting down something like sluggo. Uh, this is just a granular. You put it on the ground, the slugs eat it. Uh, then they can't eat anymore and they go away and they hide and they die. So uh, this is a good thing to kind of just sprinkle down into the ground for all those nasty slugs and snails. Um, so these are the products you should definitely have um, when growing begonias. Some kind of cool things about begonias that I think is really neat. I love that we have the, um, the ones actually have a smell to them. But when you look at begonias, you'll notice there's two different types of flowers, which is kind of neat. So there's the big showy flowers. And even in this photo, you can kind of see it a little bit. So you have those really big, beautiful, full flowers, almost kind of look like a rose flower. And they're big. The flowers are big like that. So I don't know if we can see that. But then do you see in here that there's a picture of a flower that you can see in the center and it's yellow? And it just has one little tiny um, kind of leaflet around it. So the big showy flowers are the male flowers and the little flowers are the female flowers. So this is something that has two different sets of flowers on there. Uh, so sometimes you'll see some of the female flowers come first and people start to worry, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with my begonia. The flowers don't look like it did last year or the flowers don't look like how it looks on the photo. That's because there's two sets of flowers and it's just like the Beach Boy song. There's usually uh, two females for every boy. <laughs> so two girls for every boy. You'll usually get two female flowers for everybody not always uh, but a lot of the times you do um, so that's kind of a neat thing that there are two different kinds of flowers on here and then you'll see that with all the different types but I love these really nice big full ones and I love these with an underplanting um, with mine I have the white ones at home uh, I do the underplanting of like purple or kind of blue violas or I'll do like the white namicia with the blue it just looks really pretty all around the edge and it's nice because you are giving it a little bit of water so that's oh, helping the bulb too and you don't have to like over overwater those plants so you don't have to worry about rotting out the bulbs when this is done so in the fall this is going to kind of start looking smaller and smaller and less less foliage on it the longer you can keep that foliage above the ground actually the better it is because it's actually still photosynthesizing it might not look beautiful so maybe you want to kind of tuck it somewhere in your garden where you're not having it in a prime spot um, but the longer you can keep that foliage on there the better it is for the bulb because it's storing all the energy into the bulb for the following year um, and then you can move them to the side I move them to the side along the side of my house if they get a little bit of rain water that's totally fine I do watch the soil and I make sure that the soil hasn't totally dried up uh, I don't want that soil to get so dry and so compact where it's starting to shrink and then you're actually getting kind of a gap between the edge of the soil and uh, the pot which we call the gap of death um, which is not good for the plant um, that usually happens if you use too much soil that has like a lot of peat moss or something think of a sponge as it dries how it shrinks right um, a lot of soil with way too much peat concentration will do that um, I find the soils that we have here don't have an issue with doing that too much but it just depends on the kind of soil you're using so watch for the big old gap of death you do not want that to happen uh, so I do occasionally give my pots just a little squirt of water here and there uh, just making sure that uh, that bulb stays fresh in there um, but you don't want to get a, a ton of water like that's why putting them in the ground tends to not be a really good thing because you're watering your round for other things uh, and you can have the tendency to rot your bulb out so especially if you're working with an area that has like sprinklers that never change and it's going you know three times uh, even through the winter time uh, it's not going to be super happy there so in pots much easier because easier to control and then you can kind of scurry those away so then that way you don't have to look at them when they're not looking so great um, so pots are fantastic and you'll really notice in all of these almost every single one of these is in a pot so we show them um, even in these in pots because it really is kind of the best way for them um, 
And there are different kinds. The non-stop begonias tend to flower a little bit earlier uh, than some of these other ones. Um, we will sell them where they're started for you already as well, uh, but it is a much better deal to do this. I mean, like I said, I didn't even realize this one actually has four in it. Usually they have two. Uh, so there's two in this pot here. Um, but you wanna make sure you're feeling them and that they're nice and you wanna get these guys right away. It is time to put them in the ground now. So you can go ahead and put them in the pots now. Uh, it's a really good time for that. Maybe do a little pretty underplanting or something underneath that. So uh, we are live. If you guys have any kind of questions for us, I can answer those questions for you. If you uh, stumbled into this maybe a little bit late and it's not live and you're watching this after it's been recorded and posted, you can add your questions down below and we can answer those questions for you. We do have all of our bulbs in. Um, I am such a gargantuan dahlia fan every year I tell myself I'm not gonna buy any more dahlias and uh, I planted two more <laughs> so uh, I just can't help myself we got some really really beautiful ones so I have more dahlias and I planted those over my little weekend this uh, last couple of days so there's all kinds of really beautiful stuff all different kinds of beautiful colors you want to get them now before uh, they start selling out of the colors you want the worst thing is when you're coming in you're all excited and there's only like two more colors left or it's even worse when you look at the box you see the color you reach in the box you pull it womp 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 there's nothing left that's like the biggest tease uh, so grab all your stuff now so you have it uh, you still have a little bit of time to plant but you can plant right away because uh, we did get stuff a little bit later but you can still plant all the way up for about a month from now it would still be okay to get stuff into the ground so do we have any questions yes we do thank nice. you sir yeah. first question is how deep do you plant them so it's really nice because on the back there is a nice little um Thing right here and even when I'm planting my dahlias um, I am still using a ruler because I'm really really bad at guessing how uh, long and deep things are so on the back there's a nice little thing that tells you uh, what depth to plant all of them um, it was interesting I was reading some stuff about um, where people were digging them out of areas where they were finding them growing naturally and they were replanting them and I thought that was kind of a really interesting thing um, but you don't want to plant them too terribly deep and then you want to make sure that you're feeling the orientation on these and that the pointed side is up so like I said remember it feels kind of almost like a like one of those flat peaches but one side has much more of a point and one side has much more of a divot so point side up on these guys um, but yeah um, and then on the back it gives you the depth on here so just make sure you're looking at the back and it has a whole nice little display for uh, for all of these I always try to keep one of these um, in my potting shed because sometimes you can buy bulbs when they're loose and you don't get any kind of planting instruction I know I can google it but I'm still kind of old school that way. And I'm always referring to my little chart. Um, so it's on the back of the bulbs here. And it's gonna depend on the variety, of course, uh, but the, all that information is on there as well. Okay, I bought some tuberous begonia plants last year. They were beautiful. Mm -hmm. They went dormant and I haven't seen any growth since. So no growth yet. You're not gonna get your growth until probably about March or April. I'm guessing because of the weather, uh, and I'm just predicting here, just kind of like the weatherman, that things are gonna come out a little bit earlier uh, because the weather has been so much warmer. We've been having all these weird warm snaps and now we're all windy and kind of crazy. We had that really strange rain just the other day, but we're definitely on a warming trend and it's the nighttime temperatures that are pretty warm still. So once we start getting over 50, definitely 55, that's when everything kind of starts waking up. Uh, so you shouldn't see anything on them yet. Um, if you wanna do an under planting and start giving a little bit of water now, that's totally fine. And a little bit of fertilizing, half the strength of fertilizer on everything until you start seeing a significant amount of growth and then you can kick it up to the full uh, strength. And I would say give it at least two inches uh, before you start going into that full strength fertilizer. What is underplanting? Okay, so underplanting, um, well, it's kind of funny because when you're doing a bulb, technically you're overplanting it first and eventually it's kind of underplanting. But I say that I like to have an underplanting underneath my um, plants. That's when I'm gonna have a situation when I have a um, something that is my shower. So like we talk about in all of our um, plantings, we wanna have our filler, our spiller, and our thriller. So this is my thriller, this is my shower shower plant right so this is the most important plant but my underplanting is because I want to plant something around the edge of the pots to soften the edge and kind of cascade over so I don't have to have two things to be a spiller and a filler a spiller and a filler can be exactly the same thing so um, but I want something underneath it so I'm not just looking at imagine this was planted in a larger pot and it's just one thing 
smack in the middle, nothing around the sides. I'm just looking at a bunch of dirt, which I don't want to do. I like all my stuff really packed and really full. So um, when I'm talking under planting, I'm meaning something that's going to plant. I'm going to plant to have a little bit of flower, a little bit of growth that'll be underneath uh, my thing that is my thriller plant. But when you're planting your bulb, obviously there's nothing there yet. So you're kind of over planting your bulb. So eventually there's an under planting when your bulb comes up and there's something underneath it. So that's pretty much what that means. But I like to have uh, stuff that's a little full and I have different stuff. And I love so many different plants that I just cram so much stuff into one area. But do not crowd your begonias with other begonias. Make sure that that has room to be up high and nice and full and there's not multiple begonias competing because that's when you're going to have um, rotting issues. And don't plant something like a nice cute little um, viola or a little um, um, cascading kind of alyssum or something like that where you're watering, 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 watering because you'll rot out your bulb. Uh, so you don't want to water too much and you don't need to water those plants too much anyway. So you just want enough that the soil feels kind of like a wrung out sponge, that there's a little bit of moisture when you touch it, but it's not sopping wet. Or if you pick it up, water's dripping out the bottom. Uh, you want to stay away from, from getting them too wet because that could be a rotting issue for sure. Okay, that's yeah. all the questions. Nice. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's so much fun to talk to you about all the different plants. Uh, we're getting new stuff in all the time. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you go and check out our website and sign up for our email list because we're getting all kinds of really cool things in. Tomato Mania is starting really soon, which I'm super excited about. And again, just like I say with the dahlias, I'm not going to buy too many. And then I buy way too many. So you're keeping me like all of you you're going to ask me when you see me sarah how many tomatoes did you buy i hope you didn't buy over 10. <laughs> so you're going to help keep me in check okay so i don't go crazy um but tomato mania is coming up uh you can go online and you can pre-order your tomatoes too which is really amazing because a lot of the tomatoes if you know sell out really quick especially the tomato of the year which looks like it's going to be really beautiful it's a juliet type uh called bronze torch bronze flame bronze torch I think it is but it's a Juliet style so it's kind of that long uh elongated smaller tomato and it's stripy and really pretty and I love Juliet tomatoes so I'm really excited about this one it's one I've never grown before um but you can pre-order your tomatoes so you know that you're not going to run out of your favorite uh that is the worst when you have something that you grow every single year or something you're really excited about growing you come in and it's totally sold out so you can pre-order same same thing with peppers we're gonna have a ton of different amazing peppers uh which is really excited I've I've gotten really into to pepper growing. I think last year I did like six different types of jalapenos, which was really fun to kind of test all the different ones. Uh, and then it became like jalapeno roulette because I'd pick them and I couldn't remember which ones were which. So some were sweet and some were really hot and we couldn't tell. And we're like, okay, test it. Um, but you can get signed up and you know about all those fun things that are coming up here. Uh, we're going to have our spring opening really soon, which is always a really magical time here at Rogers. So make sure you check those things out. Um, go check out our YouTube page. So much great Great content there it goes back years and years and years and years it is a wealth of knowledge any question you could possibly have I guarantee there is a video for it there so make sure you go check those out as well uh, and then if you have any friends that are really into bulbs or getting into bulbs uh, make sure you tag them down below so they know what we have going on here and that they get in right away and get the stuff that they want so they have the cream of the crop picked before everything gets picked over really soon so if you came in late put your questions down below and we'll answer those for you as well so thank you so much everybody be well and be safe and happy gardening everyone bye